Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a new episode of Heroes Advent. I am so ready to get back into this. I love this game. It's so much fun. I love the characters and the setting and just everything about it. Ah, man. But anyway, guys, the last place we left off, we were, like, picking... Rye was sensing some crystals that we could extract from the tree, and... I don't know, maybe some shenanigans are gonna unfold, and you never know in this game. <laughs> But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy the maintain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. Hey! Actually, let's go back and see what happens when you go on the wrong path. He said right. I'm going to go right. I guess this way. You sprinted onto the right side. Unlike what Ray said, the forest seemed to get denser and denser as you went on. Wait, something isn't right. Ray said there would be a clearing. The road seemed to get muddier along the path as well, though after a while you did end up at a clearing. It was quite dark, however, what with all the tall trees blocking off the sunlight. There was also no river in sight. You felt uneasy and thought of going back, but your bladder felt like it could explode at any moment, so you decided to just unzip your pants and release yourself at a nearby tree. You believed a massive sigh of relief after having emptied your bladder. You heard something rustling in the bushes. Uh-oh. Uh, what was that? You didn't notice it before, but something really felt amiss. The forest was eerily silent. The birds were no longer chirping. Somehow the shades grew even darker and even the air felt different. The whole thing just made you really uncomfortable as you wished to hightail it out of there. But just as you started to leave, you felt like something was approaching you from behind. You turned around cautiously, only to be met with a giant snake creature with crystals protruding from its head. Uh oh shoot! Ma! The creature tackled you and swallowed you with its maw in the blink of an eye. Gah! Help! You struggled and wriggled against the slimy flesh, only to find yourself being pushed further down the snake. Let me out! <laughs> you yelped and hollered, but soon you were nothing but a bulge on the snake's neck. You could feel it slithering back from the clearing. You tried to claw your way back out to no avail, as your sharp claws couldn't even dent it. Help! G Max! Ray! You cried with all your might of sheer panic, but soon you, enough you began to feel weak. You must be running out of air in there, so you tried to limit your breathing. Your eyes are getting wet from despair. Is this how your life would end? Your thoughts flew back to your first days in, the, in this world. The forest cottage and the first person you, you met in this place. Uh, Alyssa, I'm sorry. I couldn't be a hero you wanted me to be. You whispered as you felt your mind oozing away. It's getting warmer and harder to breathe in there. You thought back to your time with Max. Those days at the cabin. That moment where you admired the sunset on the hill with him just felt like yesterday. You and him holding hands after a day of sightseeing. M Max, help me! You wish you were in his warm and fuzzy embrace as your mind started going numb. You felt your body going limper by the moment. Maybe your mind started playing tricks on you, but the flesh looked quite inviting just then. It was warm and pillowy. The faint heartbeat of the beast soothed your thoughts. You felt a tingling sensation at the base of your feet and tail. Mom! Dad! This is not so bad. You thought to yourself as you slowly drifted to sleep. F fuzzy. Fur. You couldn't remember what happened, only that your flesh prison was shaking violently for quite some time. Though eventually it did stop completely. You could feel the cold wind brushing against your fur as you were stripped away from the warmth. Hey! Hey! Cassian! Damn. Oh, man. That was a bad path. You could vaguely remember your name being called, though you couldn't really see much in the blinding light. Uh, let me go. It's so cold. Need warmth. Eesh. It was too much for you to bear, but eventually, it stopped. Jeez, man. Oh, wow, this is radically different. Uh -huh. You found yourself in a dark hallway as you slowly came to. Where am I? You muttered, holding your throbbing head in confusion. What is this place? Uh, my head. Last time I was eaten by a giant snake? You were in some sort of corridor. The cobblestone walls to your sides reminded you of those of those old and medieval castles. Only that this place was much darker and more claustrophobic. I need to get out of here. You trod on for a while, cautiously feeling your way along the dark tunnel. Eventually, you arrived at a large doorway. The rotten door made a loud creak as you peered into the next room. It was very dark, if not darker than the hallway. A voice urged you to enter, and you hesitated. But before you had a say in the matter, you were already flung deep inside the chamber. Ooh. The only thing you could hear was the door slamming shut behind you. Oh! Before you was a shadow, reigning over a throne. 
found you. You couldn't see a thing, and you weren't sure what was creepier. The twisted smile you could sense on its face, or its distorted voice that would forever haunt your mind. At long last. The silhouette stood from its throne, and you felt a sense of dread washing over you. What? What? You cannot escape. You felt your heart skipping a bit as the figure dashed towards you. Instinctively, you turned around and ran away, only to find yourself collapsing against the cold, dusty ground. No! You uttered a hapless scream as the panic set in. You must have been paralyzed somehow. You couldn't lift a muscle as you felt its presence looming over your vulnerable self. Your mind raced with desperate thoughts. Is this the end of the line for you? A jolt of pain coursed through your body as something sharp pierced through your chest. You shot up from the ground, expecting blood gushing out from your abdomen. But then you realized you weren't in that same place anymore. Damn. Oh, wow, that was so much different. Oof. Cassian, are you okay? You held your throbbing head as you sat up. Max's voice soon became clearer as you slowly came to. Y yeah, I'm I I'm okay. Where am I? In the carriage. You passed out during the fight. We managed to take it down before it could do any more damage to you. Oh, right. S so where's Ray? Reporting the situation to the forest guards, Max said. His tone was unusually cold. His gaze was distant as you looked at him. Oh, uh, okay. Huh. After a while, Max finally returned to this as the carriage headed back to the guild. You were glad at first, but no one said a single word to each other as the awkward silence took over the whole trip ever since. Something must have happened while you were out cold. You had a lot of questions, but you, but you were still so too tired to talk to, to, to really talk about it. You also couldn't help but wish you knew more about what happened between these two. Being stuck in the middle with them wasn't exactly the most pleasant thing to experience. Okay, so... Oh, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, that was not a good one. Okay. All right. I want a good ending. Guys, I want to go for a good ending. I may do, like, I'm probably going to do, like, alternate paths and things like that, so. Anyway, that was radically different. That was really, really crazy different. Um, that was really cool. It wasn't just, like, minor alterations. It was, like, a whole different thing. All right, so this is picking back up to where we left off in the, pre in the previous save. Okay. Hey! Heh, <laughs> just kidding, Cassian. Mag Max gave you a shoulder pat. Here, come take a seat and give us a hand, if you will. So, what exactly are we looking for? Well, keep an eye out for the ones that are tingly to the touch and have no impure and have no impurities. Doesn't mean they have to be perfectly clear, just clear enough. All right. You grab the bits and pieces that Ray clipped through the giant crystal chunks as you help Max sorting through them. Some of the shards indeed felt rather fuzzy and tingly, as if filled to the brim with energy. You reach for another, and it sent a jolt of pain through your arm. Ouch! What's wrong? Um, I'm not sure. I think I just got zapped. You pointed at the shard you meant to grab, which seemed quite transparent. Huh. You probably found a potent one if that's the case. Just put it with the others, though. Hmm. Interesting. It took quite some time, but eventually you managed to process several chunks from, clust from the cluster into a basket worth pure crystals. Huh. Finally. Thanks for the help, Cassian. Usually it'd take longer to sift through them on my own. Max gave you a head pet as you rested for a bit. Ooh, excuse me, guys. No kidding! I can't remember the last time we finished before lunch break. And speaking of lunch break, Ray walked over as the canine opened his bag to reveal three food boxes. No sneeze. Go away, sneeze! Oh my god. Sneeze! <coughs> oh, god. Oh, my goodness, bless me. Oh. Sorry about that. A little bit of bonus content right there for you guys. <laughs> He passed you. He passed you one as the dragon took the other. You opened yours, and your meal turned. And your meal turned out to be fried potatoes with cheese curds and gravy all mixed together. Ooh, this is a, a, a poutine. Yeah, how did you know, Cassian? Well, we also have this back in my world. I guess some stuffs are the same no matter where you are. Oh, so we're in Canada. Possibly. Cody made this though, so it's uh, so it ought to be good. Max said as he scooped a spoonful to his mouth. Hmm, creamy and savory. The canine closed his eyes, and you could see his tail wagging, to which the dragon only shook his head with a smile. He found him quite adorable being like that, on the other hand. <laughs> he quietly enjoyed the meal under the acai tree. The dish was delicious as advertised, and the scenery somehow made it even better. It almost felt like a picnic, even. You began packing up after, you, after finishing your lunch as it was time to go. Hey, Max, I think we can go- The Malamute shushed you without warning. S something something isn't right. The dragon muttered as he scanned the area warily. It was then you realized something was amiss. You didn't notice it before, but somehow the sky felt darker, even though it was still mud midday. 
The natural ambience of the forest was also gone. Everything was eerily silent all of a sudden. Even the air felt different. It's a big forest, but I've always felt safe going back here once in a while. But this feeling... You guys can sense that too, right? Yeah. Something must have gone wrong with the Get down! Max shouted as a black mass rustled among the trees towards you. You could barely tell what was happening when Max grabbed you by the waist as you both narrowly dodged the creature dashing through the air above you. What was that? Nether beast. But how? How did it even break through the barrier? I haven't a single clue, but we have to get out of here fast. The beast appeared to be some sort of snake-like creature despite its deformities. It hissed and snarled viciously before you realized its eyes were on you entirely. Cassian! Max yelled as the beast lunged at you. Its serpentine body slithered around yours and gripped you with force. Gah! Cassian! The canine quickly grabbed the crossbow on his back. Right, go! The dragon nodded as he unsheathed his dual swords. Flame engulfed the blade as he gripped the handle, unleashing a flurry of slashes at the beast. As its attention was now shifted towards the dragon, it took careful aim at the creature's head. Cold energy slowly concentrated at the tip of the arrow, imbuing it with frost magic. Gah! He felt its grip tightening as Ray landed more hits onto its body. Cassian's not doing well there! Any time now, Max! Gotcha! Max pulled the trigger. The arrow pierced through the air and hit the snake dead in the eye. Its pain seemed to multiply as the arrow burst into eye shards that pinned themselves against the creature's head. Before you knew it, its grip on you had loosened. You wasted no time to make use of its day's state. You managed to pry off its serpentine grip with your bare hands and slipped away. Jeez, that was close! You said, cowering on the ground. Cassian! As Ray cried, you looked up to see the snake towering over you. You closed your eyes and braced for impact as it lunged towards you with a menacing hiss. Then you felt a gust of cold wind as something shattered and cracked. Rarely you opened your eyes to see the beast writhing and snarling in pain as it gradually became frozen in place. Quite literally, given how it was completely encased in ice. Oh man, looks like we got saved. Huh? We got saved this time. Are you okay, Cassian? Max slowly approached you, his crossbow still at the ready as he eyed the frozen creature. Yeah, I I'm okay. You shuddered, slowly backing away from the frozen statue. I is it over? Yeah, I suppose you could put it that way. He seemed quite deep in thought. As he put away his crossbow, the statue also shattered into pieces. I am shattered into pieces! I know what's done is done, but you really should have used that in the first place, Max. Ray approached with a sigh. I know I should have, but I had to test the waters. We'd be in deeper trouble if that thing was resistant to our elemental attacks. Still, how did another beast even get here? You suspect something happened to the barrier, Rai? I don't know, but moments before the beast attacked, the barrier did become very weak. Is it because we tampered with the wrong crystal? No, I I'm confident in my, with my own ability. There's no way we harvested the wrong crystal. Then can you explain what just happened? That ability you have, are you sure it's still functioning normally? Max's tone grew colder as he went on. I, I really don't know. Even the trees seem fine after we dislodged that cluster, and, and mind your words, Max. My, sen my senses are still keen as ever, so I know what I'm doing, okay? The dragon raised his voice in anger. Is that it? Explain this then! He pointed at the beast's remains, and the dragon growled. It's not my fucking fault! Ray spat a breath of flame at the canine, missing his face by just an inch. And tell me how else this has happened! The Akai tree's harmony was thrown off. The barrier was, was, was disabled, and another beast managed. The, the, blah, and another creature managed to sneak in! There's no reason not to assume your activity here set this all in motion! The dragon grunted and clenched his fist, seemingly prepared to punch the canine in the face. G guys please They both looked at you. Max seemed unfazed, but he did speak up again after a moment. Tell me, is the barrier still down right now? It's up again. Are you sure? Look, I know what I'm doing, okay? So trust me when I say that the barrier is back up again. It's weaker, but it's still there for now. I really don't know what happened back there, but it was still there when we did the harvesting. We couldn't have been responsible for this. Max went silent as he seemed to think for a bit. Well, we still don't know for sure about that yet. Maybe we have Alex look into this, but for now, let's just pack up and go home. Be sure to notify the forest guards about this. Whatever. The dragon muttered as he quickly packed up and walked away, leaving you and Max behind. Hmm. You headed back to the checkpoint without a word. Ray kept his distance from Max, but still close enough to keep an eye on you. He also reported the incident to the checkpoint guards while Max brought out the carriage. The entire trip back home went on in awkward silence. Ray was clearly upset at Max for doubting him, and Max was still up in arms about the whole attack. Meanwhile, you still felt you didn't know enough to pick a, f to pick a side. On one hand, you shared the same suspicion as Max. What if Ray messed up and destroyed an important crystal of the tree? 
but at the same time, you felt like this entire chain of events was impossible to predict nor prepare for. Thus, there you were, stuck in the middle with those two, and it wasn't exactly a pleasant feeling. Eventually, you arrived at the guild. Huh, I think a Max and Ray sandwich would be quite enjoyable. <laughs> Eventually, you arrived at the guild. Max told you to hop off first and wait by the lobby. After what felt like another 30 minutes, you could see them approaching from the entrance. Max held a clear bag with a crystal shard inside while Ray carried the crystal-filled basket. Sorry for the wait, Cassian. How are you feeling? Max looked to you after handing the clear bag to the receptionist like last time. I I'm okay, Max. That's good, at least, if only someone actually knew what they were doing. Max threw Ray a cold glare, and we huffed dismissively. See you later, Cassian. See ya! See ya! He waved at the dragon as he immediately left for the research tower. I is he gonna be okay? Hmm. I'm sorry if your first errand turned out like this, Cassian. Max gave you a shoulder pat. So what if I treat you to some dinner before we head back? You must be pretty hungry by now. Um, I don't know, Max. After what happened, I'm not exactly feeling hungry. Come on, it's alright. It'll be my treat, too. Okay, if, if you say so. Well then, let's head to the tavern, shall we? Yeah, let's. You nodded as Max held your hand and led the way. You noticed his wagging tail as a faint smile bloomed on his stern face. You were feeling conf conflicted, but Max seemed like he genuinely wanted to make it up to you. And that alone, that thought alone eased, helped ease you up quite a bit. You followed him to the tavern and sat by an empty table in the back. After a few minutes, you could see Ashford swinging by to give you the menu. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How may I help you? Hey, Ashford. What's on the specials for today? Well, for today's specials, we have the crust of soup with garlic bread croutons and special... Max! A familiar tiger approached in front of your table, seemingly out of nowhere. Toby! Ha! Huh, got room for one more? He asked as he quickly took a seat. Oh, hey, Toby. Where have you been? Ah, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, been patrolling the area. Looking for clues on your last encounter with another smuggler. Mm-mm! <clears throat> Ah, oh, right, right. So you guys ordered anything for dinner yet? I'm starving. We were getting we were getting to that, actually. Go ahead and grab whatever you want, Toby. My treat. <laughs> well, don't mind if I do. Food. Um, num, 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 num. Ah, oh, that was great. That was great. <laughs> Thanks for the treat, Max. No problem, Toby. All for a day of hard work. You just sat there in silence, watching the two bantering amid the chuckles. Sometimes you notice Max wanting to say something as he eyed you, but Toby kept coming up with new topics to grab his attention away. This went on and on until you felt like you needed to leave. Um, Max? You tried to call for the canine, your voice seemingly drowned out by the tiger's noisy chatter. But Max! You helped. You yelped, ignoring Toby's glare as he went silent. Yeah, Cassian? Is there something you need? I think I'm going back to my room. It's getting late for me. Oh, that's right. Want me to escort you back? Come on, Max, he's not a kid anymore. Let him walk back by himself. Toby snickered. Well, that's fine, I guess. Are you sure? Y yeah, thanks for the dinner, Max. See you tomorrow. You got up from your seat. Bye, Toby. Bye, Cassian. Anyways, Ma. <clears throat> Excuse me. You saw Ashford approaching again. Max and Cassian, right? Yeah? What is it, Ashford? Alex asked that you take this gentleman here to his, to his lab after dinner. They happened to be delivering his order for the evening when he made the request. Oh, is that, is that it? Better get going, then, Toby said as he left the table as well. I don't think you can come along, Toby. Alex doesn't like unappointed guests. Oh, man. Ah, mm. oh, you sure? I also know him, too, you know. Yeah, but you know, Alex, better not take any chances. Besides, tomorrow we're going on patrol duty again, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, almost forgot. Yep, best rest up for tomorrow. Okay, you're right. Well, I'm heading back for now. See ya, Max. Bye, Cassian. Toby waved you goodbye as he left. Well, let's go. Alex is waiting for us. Max grabbed your hand again and guided you to the underground lab. You couldn't help feeling embarrassed being dragged along the way like so. And somehow you felt like you were also being watched. Before you knew it, you are already walking through the underground corridor. The lab door slid open, revealing a lynx tapping his feet by the doorway. Took you long enough. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Alex. Headed over as soon as we could. So, what is it that you needed? You followed Max into the lab. Uh, maybe I should do a different voice for Alex. Maybe. 
Something more stoic, yet reserved. Hmm. I need to gather some samples from Cassian, and do a scan on him. You did say you wanted to know more about him, yes? I do, yeah. Wait, scan me? Mm-hmm. I need to take a closer look in order to find out more about you. It asked what you are and where you came from. Okay, what do I need to do then? Come with me. The Lynx went to his computer and started typing. The wall next to him opened up into a passageway, which led into a large room inside. Well, they say it's always larger on the inside. Alright guys, I'm going to save it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been another episode of Heroes Advent. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!